Hello, I am Wanderer001, and no, this is not a review of a folding chair. This is what I was using in my home office when I was told that I will be working from home for the foreseeable future. I was woefully unprepared with my home office setup because, well, I never had a home office before. I would normally just sit on a couch and edit videos and do things that way. Now I have a home office, and I'm working from home for my primary job as well. This was not cutting it. So, I upgraded to this, which was a hand-me-down chair from uh, a friend, and it was pretty much falling apart on me, and was not the most comfortable. Enter the OFM Essential Collection Racing Style Bonded Leather Gaming Chair. I needed a better chair for my home office, and this one fit the bill for all of the things that I was looking for. I will say, starting off, primarily I got this because, well, it was cheap. This is a $100 gaming style racing chair. Two, this was the only chair that I could find that would deliver during the pandemic. So I've been testing this and using it on a daily basis for over a month right now. And I will say, there are a lot of things that I like about this. There are a few things that I'm not too happy with, but let's talk about the chair itself. For starters, coming down here to the seat, you are looking at having a minimum height from floor to the bottom of the seat of 16 and a half inches or at its max height setting of 20.5 inches. So you've got a nice height range there. The seat itself is fairly well cushioned and you'll notice that it has mesh accents along with this bonded leather. Now, primarily I was looking for something that had this mesh because, well, I have cats and keeping them out of this room has been a hassle so that they don't claw up this chair. Now, the seat itself is 20 and a half inches up front at its widest and tapers down to the back being 18 inches across there. There is 19 inches of usability in the seat from the furthest point to the front. I will say that while the padding up front has remained fairly plush in the month that I've been using it back here where I actually kind of lean in and sit because well there's a bump up there that we're going to talk about in a minute. But back here where I primarily lean, uh, the padding has kind of diminished. It still doesn't make this uncomfortable to sit in, but it is definitely noticeable. And primarily you're sitting further back as opposed to up here because it is a gaming style racing chair. Because right there, seven inches up from this portion here is the lumbar bump. Now, you will notice that it kind of sticks out a little more than the rest of the chair there. And this is a non-adjustable lumbar bump. So that's why I'm sitting right there all the way in the back. And if you're not a tall person or shorter, this lumbar bump might not work for you. For me, it's not bad. It sits about where I would expect a lumbar bump to sit for me. The chair itself here is 19 and a half inches at its widest point. Midpoint here, you're looking at 19 inches. And then up here at the headrest, you are looking at 12 inches. And the back has about 26 inches from top to bottom where it connects to the base of the seat. So depending on your height is how this will sit on you. Now you will see that the lumbar area here is nicely padded and you do have some nice padding along here. The middle also is somewhat padded, not as squishy as here or here. The headrest is uh, also padded nicely. I have no problems with that whatsoever. So we're gonna spin this around to kind of take a look at the back, get an idea of what the bonded leather there looks like on the back. And I will say for the most part, construction is fairly well, but I have noticed in a couple spots, not as noticeable on the back, except for like here in the corner. It's not, it's not great. And I'm gonna say you get what you pay for in this instance, but again, a hundred dollar gaming chair, not terrible. So up here, you can kind of see where I've been leaning. It's uh, kind of stretching it a little bit, but that's not bad. Part of the reason I like this style gaming chair is because of these collapsible arms. Now, again, fit and finish, you'll notice left side, there's a gap. Right side, there's not a gap. It's not terrible, but the Overall fit and finish is not what you would get with uh, some of the more expensive style gaming chairs. However, this gaming chair, since you know I have to be on a lot of conference calls now, I will admit, doesn't really look like a gaming chair when you're sitting in it. So 
let's actually take a look at what it looks like to have a person sitting in the chair. So here you can see I'm not a terribly large gentleman. Uh, my back is resting up against the back right here. So I do have that lumbar support sitting exactly where I want it. You can see across my chest here, I have these nice side areas where I kind of just lean into. The headrest itself, you know, is a little short for me, but if I'm just gonna lean into it, uh, it's, it's gonna do what I want it to do. The armrests themselves are pretty good. For me, one of the reasons I wanted collapsible armrests are that when I'm working at a desk, armrests always got in the way for me. Now these are nice large armrests and I'm happy that they fold up and out of the way because then I can really get close to either my computer or my actual desk. But the one problem with having the armrests built into the chair itself is you don't get adjustable heights with this. These are always going to be where the armrests are, which are either gonna be 26 inches from the floor or 29 inches from the floor, depending on where you have the seat situated. Now, the armrests themselves are very nicely padded, and I'm willing to make that sacrifice of not having adjustable heights, because even with adjustable height armrests, one of the big problems that I have is that even when I adjusted them to their lowest settings, I would still hit them on a table. Now, the maximum weight for this particular chair is 275 pounds. So again, I'm not a large gentleman myself. I've had no problems with it. I have seen reviews for people who are a little larger saying that, you know, even 250, 260, it's still a very comfortable chair, even with the padding down here. So coming in and looking at closer detail of the armrest, you'll notice that you have the mesh up top here and then your bonded leather along the sides. It is very squishy and very comfortable. Now, the wheels down here, again, this is a fairly thick carpet for having something like this on, but the wheels do move fairly freely and you do not have to worry. This is a adjustable up, down, and tilt back. So you can raise and lower this, and if you wanted to tilt back, it does not tilt back all the way. So you'll just get a little tilt. Okay, so let's talk about being somebody who's never actually put something like this together. So here we go. This is what you get in the box when you first open it. All of this is put together using an Allen key and a bunch of screws. They pretty much use the same screws for all of this. And I will say it took me probably 40 minutes of putting it together with the included tools. If I had used something better than the Allen key that came with it, I probably could have put it together faster. I will say what I did not realize is that the arms here are actually what hold the chair together, so to speak. This piece here is built in to the arm itself. And this holds your seat to the back. Now, for installation of the back to the seat, I highly recommend that you have a second person hold this in place because it is a pain in the butt to do. There are these finishing things. So this had a little cap here. There are finishing caps here, here, and here, and on the other side. I do not have them in place because what I have found, and it's probably my own fault because I'm very rough on chairs in general. I have found generally within a week or a week and a half, uh, I will notice that there's a little give in the back. And that's because those side screws have loosened, so I just keep the finishing caps off of there so that I can get in there with the Allen key and tighten them up, you know, once a week, once every other week. It's not terrible, so, I mean, if you're looking for a racing style office chair to up your game or just need an office chair, and this is all you can find, for the price of $100, depending on where you get it, you can't really go wrong. Like, I've, I've been using it for over a month now, and I've, I can say, it is much better than the folding chair, and it is better than that other chair I had. So if you were in the market for a new chair, I would recommend checking out the OFM Essential Gaming Style Chair. I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.